There we go. Hi. <laughs> hey. What's up? You know, there's always something going on on here, so don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> That's always right. something on Instagram. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. How is the weather out in Florida right now? Uh, where are you? I'm in California. Let me start. Okay. So you good. So um, the weather's gorgeous. I was in the ocean this morning. I didn't want to brag, but since you're in California, you're okay. Yeah. You're not, you're not in the snow at least. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank God. So yeah, this is your first live. This is my first live. I'm so honored. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Your first have live. Juice. I got my watermelon juice right here. So. Ah. Wow. <laughs> okay. You have watermelons like uh, good ones. Um, they're organic. They're not. I mean, I juice them right now. I'm on a juice fast, so I'm uh, I'm just doing with, with what I got. You know, they're not really e that edible, but they're drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like I gave up on the watermelons for the year, but maybe Callie has has better ones. I put on my mic so there would be oh. good sound because I Instagram messes with my sound all the time. So I was like, I bought this gamer headphones, whatever. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> not sometime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for being here. Oh, we have some beautiful people here. Thank you very much. And what, what, before we start, what's your name? My name, name is Mads. Well, I'm Madison, but I go by Mads. Mads. Yes, yes. Okay, Madison. Right. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So, um, so you've been raw vegan for over 12 years, right? 12 years. Yes. Oh, this year will be February. Uh, it's hard to know the exact month, but 12 years this year. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. Goals, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably, uh, I don't know how old you are, but you look very young. I'm 20. How old are you? 29. 29. Oh, wow, you look so young. Oh, thank wow. you. <laughs> okay, I'm almost 38. So, yeah, you'll be there in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. For sure. As good as you if I stick to this. Uh... <laughs> when you're old. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Awesome. So what made you like really want to transition in the beginning? Yes. Good question. Okay. So I went raw because I really, really wanted to clear my skin. I wanted to do a lot of things, but my skin was like the worst thing in the world to me. It was so depressing. I had really bad acne. I had really bad psoriasis on my body and it would like bleed and it was so uh, dry and so itchy. And I would put big giant band-aids all over myself. Like here and on my legs because I was so embarrassed and also it was just like so raw and disgusting and all the medications all the dermatologists that they gave me topical stuff it never worked I took so much I took Accutane for my acne nothing worked everything just dried out my skin but then I would have breakouts still and it was just like a nightmare and I learned about the raw vegan diet and I was like I'll fu fuck it I'll try it because I've tried everything else I've tried every diet possible and I was really big into dieting. Okay. I was, um, I had a food addiction and I was a binge eater. And so I was 50 pounds overweight as well. And I wanted to lose weight. So I was always going on diets and I found the raw vegan lifestyle. And it was so crazy because I could eat as much as I wanted until I was full. But every other diet out there was the opposite. Every diet that I've ever gone on, like Weight Watchers, the Zone Diet, Atkins, which is now, I guess, keto. Um, I went on everything and they always like made you measure your food or count your calories and you had to have tiny portions and it doesn't work. I mean, it can't just be me, right? It, just, it uh, doesn't <laughs> work. And so the raw vegan lifestyle, I was like, whoa, hold on. I can eat like as many oranges as I want until I'm full. Like it's crazy. So I started doing it and I never looked back because after one week I felt so good and no, my acne did not go away immediately. It took a very long time. It took years for the the scars to go away, for my skin to totally heal. But like, I felt so good. I was like, I'm sticking to this because I just love it. I loved it. And honestly, it's been such a big blessing to me and it truly saved my life. So now I try to help other people discover this amazing lifestyle. That's so, so awesome. I love that. And I have like a similar story also, you know, I, I found the raw vegan lifestyle not too long ago, um, but I wanted to lose weight. I was just like, I had just had a baby. I have, uh, he's 20 months now. Oh. And I was unable to like 
the extra weight after having him. And I just, you know, I was eating everything labeled vegan and that was not working. <laughs> um, and so I was like, I work out frequently, you know, and like, that's not doing anything, you know, I need something extra. And so I'm like scrolling through Instagram. I'm like, oh, raw vegan. Hmm. And I found, I found your page and I found a few other I was like, I'm going to try, try this out. So I gave myself six weeks and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel amazing. Like, and I like, my skin was a little bad because baby and hormones and stuff. And, you know, my skin didn't clear up right away and it's still like going through like a healing crisis, if you will, you know, um, but being like on like a mostly fruits based diet has like definitely helped me like feel better. And my skin is definitely clearing up. It's taken some time but you know if I just keep at it I know it's gonna clear up a lot more yeah but your skin is beautiful <laughs> and you're glowing yeah both of us yeah, you are <laughs> it's the fruit it's the fruit it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. um so yeah I just want to say hi to Tessa she's amazing uh she said since finding this lifestyle I feel like I've won the lottery yeah yeah Tessa that's one of my quotes <laughs> that's one of my like literally it feels like i won the lottery yeah because you get to eat this amazing stuff you know we're drinking juice smoothies it's like so delicious we're not suffering there's people out there eating like brown rice and baked chicken and broccoli for every meal to be yeah. fit and try to lose weight and it's just like who wants to suffer like that and if you love to eat like that then do you boo but like well don't eat chicken but anyway yeah. that's another topic <laughs> that's another topic yeah what's what's up mark i just want to say hi i used to mark oh my gosh okay so guess what mads this guy mark i used to work with him and that was the year that i went raw in 2012 i worked with mark this guy and he's on the zoom uh he's on the uh instagram so what's up mark he has like the same birthday as me a day before i think or after and yeah the day that i went raw uh was in this store that i used to work at and um yeah that's it. That's the whole story. <laughs> so have you ever done any like long juice fasts or um, anything like extreme, you know? Yes. Well, listen, it's been 12 years. So I've been on all the crazy. I, I tried every, you know, I did all the things. I did a 35 day juice cleanse. I've done small juice cleanses, three days, seven days. Um, I've done mono islands. I've done, you know, just eating bananas, which is, you know, banana island for like seven days. And listen, I'm a big believer in consistency. Consistency is the key. And I do not personally promote juice cleanses because um, most people, when they get off a of juice cleanse, they go straight to McDonald's <laughs> and they get the beyond whatever. You know, and like most people, they celebrate the juice cleanses, cleanses by having vegan pizza. And it's like, that is literally worse for you than ever. You should have never done a juice cleanse. You should have yeah. just stuck to fruit and vegetables. A lot of people starve themselves. But if you're having enough juice, um, a juice cleanse is super healthy. I'm not going to do it ever again, personally, because I just get too hungry. I just get so hungry on a juice cleanse. Maybe I don't make enough juice, you know? And... Um, uh, I literally, <laughs> Tessa, <laughs> Tessa's never experienced a juice fast. Yeah. Well, that, that's good because you know what? Most people can't do it. Some people can. I know a lot of people that have done juice cleanses. It's been amazing for them. They've healed. And listen, hey, if I ever got sick, I would definitely do a, a juice cleanse if I ever got sick because, you know, fasting is the fastest way to heal. So either juice or smoothies or even, even water if I was really, really sick. Yeah. But other than that, my life is a cleanse. I'm just eating fruit and vegetables, nuts and seeds for m my whole life now. And, you know, like for the next, as long as I live. And I think that's cleansing enough. So that's okay. why, yeah, I don't do, I'll never do another juice cleanse unless, you know, like I have to. Yeah. And I'm, I'm doing one right now. I felt like I really needed to, you know, I was stuck in that cycle. You know, I did my raw and then I fell back into the you know, eat everything vegan cycle. And so then I went another month raw and then I did started a juice fast. And right now I'm on day 37. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. I'm doing, I'm going 90 days, you know, I'm trying to break free from my food addiction, food obsession, you know, and it's actually like helped so much right now. I feel like amazing on it, which is really cool. But, you know, when yes. I was three days, the five days, you know, that was not helping me at all. You know, I'd always resort back like, okay, what's my like 
breakfast meal, you know, like, what am I going to do? Um, yes, I feel like I am very confident in sticking to that fruit, high fruit life after. Yes. And I love talking about food addiction so thank you for bringing that up because that's one of my biggest life purposes and i'm just gonna say real quick guys i have one spot left so i'm doing a course called food addiction freedom yeah. okay and it starts next wednesday and if anybody's listening to this and wants to find out more information just dm me the words i am ready i'll send you more information on that and you know during ju juice cleanses are so powerful because it's what you're not eating, right? Like I have so many people every single day messaging me, they're on a juice cleanse or they want to go on a juice cleanse. And, they, and if they are on one, they're feeling so good. And of course, because it's what you didn't, you're not eating. It's what you don't eat that heals you. And, but so during the juice cleanse, I always recommend to people do the inner work as well. Do the inner work. So read a, a self-development book. I recommend something like how to love yourself by Louise Hay or How to Heal Your Life by Louise Hay, or How to Love Yourself by Teal Swan. Uh, do some type of inner work to work on the reasons why you are trying to, you know, deal with emotions through food, mm -hmm. you know? Because a lot of people, they miss the mark. Yes, juice cleanses are amazing, but if you don't do the inner work, nothing will change when you go off the juice cleanse. So everybody out there on a juice cleanse, you're doing something so healthy for your body. You are going to feel so good and you're going to get so many benefits, but don't forget the inner work, which is the reason why we deal with food addiction or addiction of any kind. You know, it's like we're trying to avoid the very uncomfortable, very difficult feelings that we don't want to feel. So we use food and I did it for 26 years. So I understand. So anyway, that was a long uh, answer to whatever question you asked. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You know, I love hearing you tell me everything about you. Know, all of <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cool. I like that. Um, so in the beginning, when you first tran like transitioned into your raw, what was like the most difficult thing for you? Okay. Um, the most good question. And somebody wrote that they sent me a DM and I didn't respond. Send it to me again. Uh, sorry, I get a lot. Yeah, I'm very important. I'm very important. So you see, I'm on a live with Mads. I'm very, very busy, very important. Um, so the most difficult thing, oh, that's a good question because there were a lot of difficult things. The most difficult was feeling very alone and feeling very lonely, especially in social outings. So I would go out socially and, you know, most social outings are around food mm -hmm like especially holidays and people's birthdays. And it's always at a restaurant or it's always, you know, surrounded by food, even when you go to somebody's house or it's a barbecue or it's whatever. And so I would, I felt very alone, very isolated. I didn't know one raw vegan until 2017. So from 2012 until 2000, 2011 to 2017, I was the only raw vegan I knew in real life. But then I went to the Woodstock Fruit Festival and it changed everything because I met so many weirdos and i was like oh my god i have friends all over the world now that are raw or high raw so yeah the social aspect is the hardest part for most people and it was the hardest part for me and then i had to realize that you know what it doesn't matter what i eat i like i i had to let go of looking weird for the first like six or seven years i was so afraid to look weird and be different so i would like i would eat as much as i could before i went places and then I would get a little salad and I would just tell people I wasn't hungry or I would tell people I was sick or I told people I was having a colonic the next day and I couldn't eat or whatever. But now, please, I bring, I'll bring a whole watermelon to the restaurant. No problem. No problem. And they always, the waiters, they always let you eat your food there. They don't care. They don't, they're not getting um, like upset with me ever. You know, I ask nicely, hey, can I eat my fruit? I'm on a fruit only diet. And I like to tell waiters like weird things like I'm allergic to anything that's not fruit. So I bring my fruit. Is it okay if I eat it? And they're fine. You got to let go of the judgment because, you know, nobody else is judging us as much as we are judging us. And when you start seeing the results, you're not even going to care anymore. You're, I just, I'm so grateful to have clear skin. I don't have to wear makeup. I don't have to worry about, you know, the way I look. I can, I can live my life and not have to feel embarrassed. And that's worth being a weirdo in a restaurant. And yeah, people look at you weird, but you know what? Then, the, then they ask you questions and you don't know how many waiters and people I have inspired because they're like, what are you, why are you eating 
four mangoes. Like, what's going on here? And you know, and then you give them your business card and you change their life forever. So it's part of our life purpose, guys. Everybody on this Zoom, oh, I keep thinking we're on Zoom because I've been on Zoom all day. Everybody <laughs> on this live, you're weird for a reason. You're weird to change the world. So stop trying to be like everyone else because you were not called for that. You were called to help people to feel weird, to be okay with being weird. And when you're okay with it, then you give other people permission and then the world changes. We're all trying to fit in, but it's not helping. Okay, sorry. A lot of people are asking, are writing stuff. <laughs> I was feeling the same way. Okay. And then I will order a vegan dish. Yes, I know. But don't do that because you don't ever eat anything you really don't want to eat. Oh, my God, that is my life. I'm constantly telling people that I just had a dental procedure done so that I don't have to eat anything. <laughs> yeah, Tessa Blue, I understand. Uh, keep doing you, but you're going to have to one day break out of being afraid to be judged. Y you know what? The other day I said, Tessa, and I know you heard me because I told you to write it down. I said, if you are afraid to look weird, then you don't even deserve the benefits of a raw vegan diet or a healthy vegan diet. You got to get out of that feeling like I'm, I'm, I don't want to be different. You are different. You're different. Mm -hmm. And that's that. You're not just like average people. And you can't get the extraordinary results, the amazing results you want with an average mindset and eating average food. You're not going to get what you want. Okay, sorry. I just want to make sure when I go to restaurants, okay, uh, it's hard to meet other fruitarian women. Well, if you'd like to meet other raw vegan women, I have a course starting next Wednesday. Send me a DM and you can meet literally nine other raw vegan women that are bettering themselves that are um you know they have a food addiction that they are healing they're working on themselves and they live all over the world you'll have nine other friends that are just like you and it's so amazing to meet people that are on this path because then you stop doubting yourself oh is this too much sugar are you sure i'm gonna get enough b12 uh is my iron gonna you know like and and You'll meet moms, you'll meet grandmoms, you'll meet people that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, all walks of life from all over the country. And so, um, yeah, I encourage everyone to DM me before next Wednesday. We start Wednesday. So, yeah, I just want to say that. That's awesome. Well, um, so why is the watermelon your favorite fruit? <laughs> Always been so curious. <laughs> yes, watermelon, my favorite fruit. Oh, you know what? Honestly, there's not much thought behind it. Here's the situation, okay? I just, well, first of all, who doesn't love watermelon, right? It's just so amazing. Mm -hmm. And I just love, I, I just, it's, I, to me, it's the perfect food, right? It's hydrating, it's sweet, it's juicy, delicious. It's all the things that I, I, I want to be and I want to eat. I want to eat things that are juicy, sweet, and delicious. And then I just, I eat it every single day that it's in season, you know, like May through September, October every single day for breakfast and lunch. And so people just started associating me with watermelon. And then it wasn't like planned, but then people in my life kept giving me watermelon things. Like somebody bought me like watermelon pants and then somebody bought me, like just people keep giving me, uh, if you saw how much watermelon stuff I have all around me, people just give me watermelon stuff. And then I got a tattoo of course. And then uh, it's my thing now. It just randomly happened because like, listen, when watermelon is good, oh, it's is so is so good and like if you don't like watermelon if people are out there and they don't like watermelon i don't trust you <laughs> mangoes and watermelon oh i don't know oh yeah i don't know if i could trust you because that's very that's a little mm, i don't know what's going on there but um yeah that's it that's there's no thought is there was no like thought process behind it um <laughs> Susan said, I love watermelon too. I just hate that we can't get it all year long. Absolutely, yeah. I, but you know what? That's what makes it special. And then you get a break and then you appreciate it so much more when it comes back in May. So yeah. we're looking forward to it. Yes, very much looking forward to it too. Um, somebody asked a real quick, lovely Bark, Barksdale. I'm not afraid of looking weird. I need the best advice on how to get started and what to start with. Well, DM me and I will send you all the details on my course. Um, and, uh, that will definitely help you how to, what was the end of that? It said, um, how to get started and what to start with. Well, just start with breakfast, just start with breakfast. Okay. So every day for the next seven days, I want you to eat fruit for breakfast as much as you want. 
and ripe. Go to my YouTube um, and, or go to my guide on Instagram and learn how to pick out your fruit. Learn to know when it's ripe because I'm sure you've done that. You're doing that. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you don't learn how to pick out your fruit, well, it's not going to be good. It's going to be disgusting and you're not going to like it. You're not going to want it. And, you know, trial and error helps. But why wait 10 years to learn, you know, your, uh, yourself when I've done, you know, the last 12 years I've been doing this. And that's why I never studied fruit. I just learned trial and error. I picked so many bad watermelons that eventually mm -hmm. I learned how to pick a good one, you know. And so um, that's where you start breakfast. And also check out all my videos or any videos on YouTube. Just type in, you know, the fruit that you want to learn and how to know when it's ripe. And that's it. Those videos have been so helpful. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love making them and I'm definitely, I want to make a lot more because it's all I know. So I, I, I figured I should share what so, I know. <laughs> I also have a course to just started uh, um, and it's helping uh, moms or women, you know, transition into like a healthier diet and lose some weight and like pairing that with working out. So mine's like yes. a course also. Um, so I have a link in my bio. Or you can DM me as well. Um, mine's just starting out. It's brand new. So um, yeah. Check Very out. nice. I love it. I love it because the world needs this so much. There's so much disinformation out there, Mads, that I'm just like, well, anybody doing this is just doing such a good thing for the world, you know? Like there's so much conflicting information and still people are, people every single day are asking me, is that too much sugar? You know, eating a whole pineapple for breakfast. And to this day, people are asking me about protein and sugar still after 12 years. And so, you know, like I was talking about this on my podcast the other day, how we don't know what to believe. And society is kind of like trying to convince us that eating fruit and vegetables might not be healthy. And so, you know, like, which is insane because we all know the healthiest food on earth is fruit and vegetables, but we don't really know if it's true or if it, you know, we should have more vegetables, if it's too much fruit and watermelon, too much sugar and watermelon. And so I'm really happy that you're doing this and everybody out there, please, if you know the truth, get it out there, yeah. create a course, write a book, start a YouTube, get it out there. Tessa, Tessa is amazing. Tessa, start a YouTube. We need you. We need you. Yeah, I'm taking a uh, uh, mastering raw food nutrition course right now, and it's so informational. It's been so so rad to like learn everything about all of the raw foods, you know, and how beneficial fruits truly are, and how you can't eat too much of them, and, and the, our body, our brains, every cell in our body runs on glucose. Like you need the sugar from the fruit. Like <laughs> that's how our body thrives. Who is you know? that? Um, whose <laughs> course? It's um, Dr. Karen and Dr. Rick and Dina. Dina. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. They're, they're amazing. And somebody asked what I was drinking. It's um, just bananas, strawberries, hemp seeds, dates, water. It's just a smoothie. And um, yes, it's the same course Liz and Nate, Nate yeah. are taking, I'm pretty sure. It, yeah. It's a, an amazing course. It's, it's everything is science-based. So it's like to the point, you know? <laughs> I love that. And then you could teach me. You got to teach me because honestly, my course is not science based. I never looked. I looked into the science in the beginning a little bit, but I just I'm a practitioner and I just see the results and I see my blood work. Every time I get blood tests, it's it's like I have perfect blood work and my skin is good. I lost all this weight. You know, I'm feeling good. And I'm just like, this works. So like, I got us. I should study more. I should take their course because I bet you I would learn a lot. Oh, yeah. Or you could just teach me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Your information has been so amazing. Like such an inspiration to see. Like your photos, your side by sides. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. Yeah, and it's it's a shame I don't have because you know I'm from a generation where we didn't. I didn't grow up with a cell phone or a smartphone. I didn't. You know. So like, I, remember I'm 38. So I don't have photos digitally of when I was really suffering, when I was really overweight, when I had really bad cystic acne. I actually had photos and I destroyed them all. Mm -hmm. I threw them, I ripped them up, I destroyed them all because I was so embarrassed. I didn't want anyone to know. You know, I didn't know that I would one day be on social media. There was no Instagram when I started, when I went raw. There was no Instagram. 
Instagram. There was no such thing. So um, I, uh, yeah, I basically, um, I just didn't know that before and afters were going to be so like helpful to me now. So I wish that somebody could dig up. If anybody from my junior high school or high school is out there, if you have any photos of me, please send them. That would be great. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're out there. Let's see here. What course? Which course, which course are you talking about? Um, let's see. The course I'm taking or our courses that we're both <laughs> She's taking Rick and Dina. Rick, what is? Dr. Karen and Rick Dina. Karen. Um, they're mastering raw food nutrition course. And then I have a 90-day course that helps women um, transition their diet and work out and start losing weight. And then Miss Fit Vegan has her course also. We So many yeah. courses. Yes. <laughs> and of course, we have to talk yeah. about them. Yeah. <laughs> many, many courses. But um, yeah. So um, by the way, guys, if anybody has any questions for John Gray, and I know that John Gray has nothing to do with raw food. He's the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. I know that he has nothing to do with anything, but if anybody has any questions for him, I'm going live with him in one hour on YouTube. If anybody wants to know, I just, I love to study greatness and I'd love to interview people that are doing, that are the best at what they do and doing what they were born to do. And so he's one of those people. So I'm interviewing him again because I just love talking to him. So if anybody has any questions for John Gray, uh, about relationships, about loving yourself, about, um, food addiction or, anything dm me because i'm gonna go live with him just a heads up that's awesome you always do so many awesome lives and you interview all these cool people i'm trying to get <laughs> you're doing your thing boo you're doing your thing and i see you and you know what you're doing the right thing and so you're just gonna doors of opportunity you're just gonna keep opening for you because you're doing it from love and you want to help and that's the most important thing you know when you when you help yourself and then you help others the doors open, you know, because you're just doing the right thing. And there's always the, the universe always makes room for people that are doing what they were meant to do and, and doing it from a good place of love and just want to help. And by the way, so many people, speaking of my course real quick, so many people have messaged me that they can't afford to do my course. And I just want to say real quick, one day I will be in a position, absolutely, and I want to do a course for free. One day, if this is one of my dreams, okay? So I just want everyone to know that, yes, my course is very expensive, it's pricey, uh, but it's worth it and you get what you pay for. And so one day though, I will, not, I will not forget this. I will do a course for free, okay? Because there are a lot of women out there that need help. And you know me, I only work with women. I think your course is for women only too, right? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And so, um, and because I'm a woman, I, you know, like I can't really re help men too much yeah, We're all the same, but I'm a woman. So, you know, I know what women go through and I know women's bodies and I know um, more, you know, women's like, um, how, I know how to, how I helped myself and I've been working with women for a very long time. And so anyway, I just want to put that out there. If you cannot afford my course, please know that one day I will do one for free. When I'm in the position to do that, I, you have my word. So that's, that's that. Just want to say that. Lovely. Barksdale says, is there such thing as eating too much fruit and of a certain fruit, of a certain fruit? No, there is not. Um, unless you feel like you've eaten too much of it yourself, but no, you can't overeat any fruit. No, I do want to say something real quick about that. So no, there's no such thing as too much, but there are certain fruits that will affect you differently. For example, yellow dragon fruit. You probably shouldn't eat too much yellow dragon fruit. And you know what I'm talking about, Mads? Yeah. Okay. If you have more, I don't have more than one, two at the most, but I'm staying home that day because <laughs> yellow dragon fruit are very cleansing. What's up, Becky? What's up, Becky? So yellow, yellow dragon fruit, very cleansing. The other dragon fruits are not as cleansing. I don't really know what's going on there, but either way, don't have too much of that. Uh, the other thing you don't want to have too much of is durian. Okay, don't have too much durian because I've had too much and it's very, very heavy, very heavy fruit. The other fruit you don't want to have too much of is something called canistel, which is also known as egg fruit. Have you had egg fruit yet? Oh, I mean, gosh, I want to try it so bad. 
There's something called the Canistel curse. Okay. And this has happened to many of my friends. And since I knew about it before I tried it, I've known now you can't have too much because what happens is if you have like more than two, one or two, it's very heavy. It's very dense. It tastes like cake. It's just mm -hmm. ridiculous. But see, you'll, you'll keep eating it and then you won't be able to eat it again. That's oh. happened to Chris. Kendall that happened to my old roommate that happened to many of my friends because they ate too much and it was so good and something about it now like now they literally can't eat it it's so gross to them I know it's called the cat that's still curse oh, so those are oh, the three I fruits that I know one. of <laughs> one or two at the most yeah it's a Chris Issa Christabel um said what about pre-diabetic people can they go on a fruit only or go on on only fruit breakfast yes actually you can reverse type 2 diabetes on a high fruit diet which is pretty cool is what i've learned um fruit does not cause diabetes it's all that processed sugar and all the pre-packaged stuff with all that stuff in it fruit does not <laughs> fruit reverse absolutely reversing. yeah absolutely so i was pre-diabetic before i went raw so that should tell you something. Uh, Fully Raw Christina had major um, blood sugar issues before she went raw. And Mastering Diabetes is a great website and a great Instagram page and YouTube channel to please watch and check out. What's up, Daniel? Um, because they are focusing on people with diabetes, type 1 and type 2, and helping them to reverse both. And so I need you to understand that the, the whole entire concept of sugar has really um been uh what's the word like literally they have totally destroyed the concept of fruit sugar being different than twinkies like in a doctor's eyes for some reason twinkies are the same as an apple oh and this is insane okay. this is totally insane it's so insane my doctor told me when i was pregnant with my baby that i was eating too much fruit because my body couldn't tell me tell the difference between ice cream and fruit and that's why i was so much weight and so i stopped eating fruit are you kidding me i am not and that's ridiculous a doctor I will not yeah. this is this is, supposed to, this is supposed to be the professionals of society and they don't know anything because i actually heard that 70 percent of medical schools don't require any nutrition classes and 30 percent don't even offer any yeah they don't so so, like, how can we be trusting doctors to know about what to eat? All right, maybe they know how to fix a broken leg, but they do not know what humans should be eating. And I don't know one doctor that has read Return to the Brain of Eden or 80-10-10 or the China study or, you know, like, I've never met a doctor that is really, truly educated on food. And food truly affects us. Every single organ, every single cell in our body is made up of what we eat. Yeah. Please understand and you see her doctor so let me guess so were you eating did you have to eat like meat and chicken and animal products she was very um, weary about me being on a raw or a vegan diet but she's like just eat more vegetables so i ate like a ton of vegetables you know had salads like all day long but um she said i was just gaining way too much weight and just cut the fruit out so luckily i like still kept like a smoothie in there but it was on mostly vegetables and like stuff like that, but I gained so much weight. Wow. But wow. Something about the doctor's thing um, in the course I'm learning, they're talking about how in the doctor's school, like in their schooling, they are definitely not required to take a nutrition course. They only are taught about the pills to prescribe for the illness. You know, they only prescribe a pill for the ill, you know, a pill for the ill. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's a business. It's a business. The medical industry is a trillion dollar industry. The fruit and vegetable industry is not. And so, you know, like they, you know, without getting into too much politics about why, just know that it has been proven so many people are reversing their diabetes, reversing their health issues, uh, reversing their skin issues, losing weight, feeling really good. Um, and so why don't you give it a try? Listen, and you know, if you're struggling, reach out to one of us and we can help you because doing it alone is very, is much harder, you know? And, and it is, both are hard. Being sick is hard and getting healthy is hard. But the thing about getting healthy is it gets easier the more you do it. Being sick and being overweight and being depressed and having skin issues, it just continues to get harder and harder and harder. So choose your heart. Exactly.
Exactly. Choose your heart. <laughs> That's what I, I've been saying that for years because people are just like, Jeanette, it's even my best friend. I live with my best friend. And she's like, Jeanette, it's too hard to eat like you. And I'm just like, but isn't it hard to be sick? Yeah. Like, isn't it hard? And the, the thing is, most people, they don't change until it's bad enough. You yeah. know, they get that diagnosis. They, they, you know, have some major skin issues or like they, you know, hit rock bottom and then people want to change. Well, see me and you, did you have like major health issues? Um, no, not like... I just was like was struggling to lose like the extra weight and my skin was really bad. I didn't have anything like super major, luckily. Yeah, so we got lucky, me and you, because I didn't have any major health issues. Yes, I had all these random, you know, migraines and extra extra weight and IBS and all these things, but I didn't have a, a diagnosis of cancer or liver disease. Yeah. But most of my clients unfortunately do, you know, because that's when people reach out to me when it's, you know, almost too late, when they're just like at rock bottom and please if you're listening to this, it's for a reason. You don't wait until rock bottom because then it might be too late to change. Don't wait. Prevent, prevent, prevent. And one thing you can start doing today is to download. I love this book. It's called Fit for Life by Harvey Diamond. Have you, have you read it or listened to the audio? No, not yet. I'm gonna... It's really good. I recommend everybody on this call goes to Audible and gets Fit for Life by Harvey Diamond. It's an amazing book. It will help you so much while you're making better decisions. It will help you have confidence in knowing that what you're doing is the right thing. And like a course like Rick and Dina's course, uh, I, I keep forgetting Karen and Rick Dina, Rick and Dina, <laughs> uh, like Karen and Rick Dina, <clears throat> like their course is giving you so much confidence. So, you know, you're doing the right thing. And that's what these courses do. They just help you to understand that there are millions of people around the world doing this. They're getting healthier and you don't need to worry about these crazy um, notions that eating fruit and vegetables is going to cause deficiencies. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. We're eating the healthiest food on earth. How could we possibly get deficient in anything? You know? Yeah. You can have a B vitamin or B12 and a vitamin D deficiency on a, on a carnivore diet. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. 60. I think the statistics are 65%. The latest ones, 65% of uh, people have a B12 deficiency. They're not raw vegan. 65% are not raw vegan. And you know, society is actually in a very, very bad place. The last study I read said that 50% of Americans are either overweight or, or mm -hmm. obese. Mm -hmm. This is very scary. And at least it's at least 50% because most people aren't reporting probably on the yeah. census that they're overweight or obese. So please, everyone out there, just use your common sense when you're using your fork. That's what I ask, you know, common sense, fruit and vegetables. This is the healthiest food on earth. And if you want to eat cooked food, you know, what's healthy rice and beans and, you know, lentils and vegetables. These are super healthy, you know, fried chicken and uh, burgers and french fries and beyond beef and beyond sausage these are not oh you I know and those fake meats oh i've gosh. never had them i've never had them because they didn't have them when i yeah back then and, um the only thing i had was tofu and it was really gross to me but also i didn't know how to cook you know if i knew how to cook i i might have stayed eating like cooked food but i'm just lazy and <laughs> i don't like to cook so I was like, let me try this raw thing. And it's just so easy and amazing. And just once you know what to do, you're good. All right, let's see. Um, Hippocrates Institute gives fruit only once a week to heal their clients, although they focus on raw. Yeah, actually, I've learned about that in Dr. Karen and Rick's course right now. They talk about Hippocrates a lot. And, um, you know, the only problem with that is People, when they, they stop, like when they leave the hip hop example, they can't keep on the weight or they can't like gain weight or if they want to gain weight or something like that, you know, they need the fruit to fill up their calories, you know, they can't like thrive on just vegetables. Um, so that's like the only thing they'll become like deficient. But if that's what you want to do, you know, it's have mostly vegetables, have mostly vegetables. Yeah. Hippocrates Institute, fruit only once a week. Yeah, I, I think it's a few times a week, but really like they're just doing lots of sprouts, lots of vegetables or like sprouts and then fat. 
you know, like pates and seed butter and like avocados and stuff. And it's like, well, that's way healthier than what most Americans are doing. Of course, people go there to heal mm -hmm. and they do heal because it's what you don't eat that heals you. But see, the weirdest thing that I don't know why they would cut out fruit. I don't understand that because fruit is the most cleansing food on earth. So I understand they're probably operating from a mainstream mentality where they're saying like, okay, fruit has sugar and sugar feeds cancer. This is like mainstream thinking. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're... This is weird. This is very strange. So, hey, I don't know uh, what's going on there, but um, Brian Clement is very into the fats, but he, I don't know, he doesn't look like the face of health to me personally. I I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. He, I think he needs more fruit. Low fat, say. high carb is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zin Rosie, what's up, my boo? That's my, that's my watermelon sister, Zin Rosie. Oh, Susan, <laughs> best diagnosed in 2008, went... Whole food, plant based, lost eighty pounds. Wow! Congratulations. Off all medications. That's awesome. It's the way to go. All right. Well, I know you said you had to get off of here at uh, twelve forty-five. So, um, anything else you want to say or? Well, I want to say thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you for everybody for listening to this. Um, and I just want to leave everyone with um, something that I like to say to myself, okay? Because a lot of us feel like, you know, things are out of our control. Like if our family doesn't eat healthy, then it's very hard for us. If we don't have a workout buddy, it's hard for us. If we don't have any raw vegan friends or healthy vegan friends, then, you know, it's impossible for us to be healthy. But I just want you to remember that if it's meant to be it's up to me this is what i say to myself and if you really really want something you are going to find a way you're going to find a way and that's what you're going to have to do every single person that you look up to every successful person in any area of life has found a way and when there was no way they made that the way they made a way out of no way and so please understand that you can always find an excuse but then you can't have a a result that's right that's it that's it i love that thank you so much for everything today i just loved having you on we'll have to do this again sometime yes please oh, i'm gonna interview you yes very yes. soon yes it's so great to talk to you and yeah i hope you have a great rest of your day thank you mads you're awesome and everybody go follow mads right now and um yeah i will see you guys soon thank, thank you very much boo Oh,